The government has tabled its new health and care bill, which proposes major changes to the NHS in England. This video talks through those changes, the BMA's opposition to the bill in its current form, and why we think it must be amended. The government's health and care bill will deliver significant legal reform to the NHS. This has been presented as a means of delivering on NHS England's own proposals for legislative change and the long-term plan, focusing on pursuing integration and collaboration over competition. However, the BMA has fundamental concerns about critical aspects of the bill. As a result, we are opposing the bill as it was presented to Parliament and are clear that key amendments are absolutely essential before we can reconsider that position. The Association will be working hard on behalf of our members to force those amendments in order to protect the NHS from unnecessary private sector involvement and to establish a health and care system that is fit for the future. The bill aims to make key changes to existing NHS architecture. This will see the formal creation of ICSs, integrated care systems, as statutory bodies, which will bring health and care services across the NHS, local authorities and others together to plan, deliver and commission care. CCGs will be dissolved with their duties, powers and resources absorbed into ICSs. Within ICSs, all health bodies will be expected to pursue the triple aim of better care for patients, better health and well-being for all and sustainable use of NHS resources. The bill would also see the removal of Section 75 of the 2012 Health and Social Care Act, which requires commissioners to competitively tender for NHS contracts. The replacement system, called the Provider Selection Regime, would instead give providers three options. The first, to renew contracts with existing providers without competitive tender. The second, to offer new or existing contracts to providers without competitive tender. And the third, to launch a competitive tendering process for a contract where deemed appropriate. This is intended to avoid wasteful competition and provide greater stability, but safeguards and transparency are absolutely essential to ensure proper scrutiny of commissioning and avoid conflicts of interest. Additionally, the bill is likely to increase the powers of the Health Secretary over the NHS. These could include the power to set or reset the direction of the NHS, amend or abolish arms length bodies, create new NHS trusts, intervene earlier and more proactively in disputes over service reconfiguration, as well as new powers over the collection and storage of data, and a duty to publish a report on roles and responsibilities regarding workforce planning every five years. Now we'll move on to how we believe the bill must change and our key campaign priorities. The first of which centres around the need to strengthen the proposed replacement for mandatory competition. While the BMA has called for the removal of the existing rules on competition in the NHS, without proper safeguards, simply removing them still poses significant risks. As we've seen during the pandemic, unaccountable commissioning can feed the so-called democracy and see contracts simply handed to inappropriate and ineffective providers. This has to be avoided within the NHS. The NHS must be a publicly funded, publicly run service, so to truly protect it from the unnecessary involvement of the private sector, we are arguing that the NHS must be made the default option for NHS contracts. Likewise, the bill must also prevent corporate private providers from sitting on ICS boards and playing any part in decisions on NHS spending or commissioning. We believe the bill must also go further regarding clinical leadership within ICSs. A truly collaborative and integrated healthcare system must have strong clinical leadership at its heart, with those with frontline expertise and knowledge of the NHS helping to shape its transformation. To this end, we want clinical leadership in primary care, secondary care and public health, as well as patient representation, to be embedded at every level of ICSs, at system, place and neighbourhood. This should include formal roles for local medical committees, local negotiating committees and public health doctors. The bill's proposals must also strengthen government accountability for ensuring adequate numbers of staff in the NHS. We do not believe that the reporting system proposed in the bill will be sufficiently meaningful unless it also includes what must actually be delivered. In order to do this, the bill must include a responsibility for the Secretary of State to produce ongoing, accurate and transparent workforce assessments which directly inform the NHS's recruitment needs. We are also concerned that the proposals within the bill regarding parliamentary responsibility for the NHS are focused more on securing political power over the health service than on ensuring accountability for its performance. As they stand, the proposals risk increasing political influence in NHS decision making and undermining long term planning should political imperatives change. To avoid this, we are calling for the introduction of clear safeguards and limits on the use of these powers. Finally, while we welcome efforts to improve data sharing across the NHS, we are concerned that the proposed new powers for the Secretary of State over data sharing could circumvent existing protections regarding the dissemination of patient data. We believe that safeguards over the reach and nature of these powers must also be included within the bill. These should include clarity on the extent of the powers and ensure that they do not undermine current protections over the use of patient data.
The BMA has clearly stated our opposition to the government's bill and we will be pushing for key amendments we believe must be made to it if it is going to have a positive impact on the NHS. We continue to actively lobby policymakers, including key parliamentarians, on our priorities for the bill. This has included direct meetings, consultation responses and parliamentary briefings. This work will continue and escalate as the bill progresses through Parliament to ensure that the BMA's voice and concerns are heard and that the bill is reformed in the best interest of doctors, patients and the health service.